part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Burgoyne, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report, the new podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me, as always, is James. That's right, James Cole. You've heard that name before, I know. But he's the Superman of Red, the man of steel. And we're here to talk about everything DC Comics and Superman related because that's what we love to do, people. So welcome, James. Hey, Tyler. How are you doing this evening? Man, I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. I know. It's been like so long. So, so long, bro. But hey, we are here. We're back in action. Like the Power Rangers, we're back in action. Go, go, Uh, Power Rangers. Check out our... uh, Everybody head over to... uh, And check out our uh, Patreon for a special Power Rangers uh, sample. If you're so, but hey, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. It's kind of weird, actually, how we have like, oh, we don't got anything to talk about. We don't got any news. Then it was like, <laughs> that's right, just like, like, oh wow, that was a lot. Um, but let's just get into it. Okay, first things up front. We called it. We straight up called it. After one season. They have canceled Naomi. (laughs) Yeah, they did. (laughs) Did it surprise anybody? I mean, it didn't. I didn't hear a lot of positivity out there um, about it. Nothing like real negative except for, you know, it just wasn't like holding people's attention and, and, um, you know, like the demographic is probably not... um, the majority of the people who ended up watching it. I mean, it's one of those or shows. Or gave it a shot, rather. Like, who's who's this for? We expect more out of our superhero shows. You know? So, I mean, Jamie liked it, so I have a feeling that we are going to finish it, and <laughs> I will watch it with her, and when it's over, finally tell her that there won't be another one. Otherwise, you know, that may be something she just doesn't choose to watch. So, she He's liked like, it, so I should at least let her enjoy what there is. You're like, hey, I gotta watch something. And, and I do I do want to check out Ray Porter in the show. I know it's That's the finale, but it's not like it only, it only had like, what was it, 12, 13 episodes? Yeah. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to watch, uh, for Ray Porter just because he was really cool on Twitter when I told him about how my daughter was loving dark side. So more power to Mr. Porter. So, but it is kind of bum. Like, Hey Ray. Yeah. I'm going to bring you in, man. We're going to get this big role in season two. You are the villain. Awesome. Film this little part here at the end. Sure guys. No problem. Uh, Hey Ray. Yeah. What's up? Show's canceled. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a spinoff of, for Supernatural, right? Can I go be on that show? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. So, Naomi is canceled. No big surprise there. Sadly, I hate saying it like that. Because I hate seeing But just watching... Man, just watching the first episode, I was like... Wow, this is bad. So, yeah. So we got that. Okay. So what else happened? Oh, let's see here. Um, DC released the Multiverse Us game trailer, and they released um the alpha testing version. So, me and Solomon kind of started doing that that's been pretty fun yeah i gotta look and see if it's available um jimmy wants to check it out i do too 
Well, let me see. I got an email. I haven't got a chance to look at it that I can share uh, with a friend for the testing. Let me figure this email out and uh, I'll send it your way. Hmm. Cool. Because, yeah, I signed up way back when they first like premiered it. I was like, hey. And it was like, sign up for now for testing. I was like, I'm going to do this crap. And then I kind of forgot about it till they did that trailer. But it looks cool. I mean, you can be Shaggy and Superman and Velma and Bugs Bunny and so it's enjoyable. Let's see what else we got. What else we got? Oh, um, rumor is that Titans season four will drop in October. That's exciting. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm still on board with the show. Uh, questionable choices aside, we've discussed that before. Um, it's still pretty good, um, yep. and it's it could nice. be great. We'll see if they ever give it the chance to push over that line. It keeps wanting to get really close to and then pull away. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, the Wonder Twins movie has been canceled. Okay. So keep that in mind, people, as we go through some of this other stuff. I didn't have a, I wasn't like pumped for Wonder Twins, but it was like, huh, okay. But yeah, that's gone. We have the announcement of a new Justice League video game. Did you see this? But it's like very kidified. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, cool. It just, it looked neat. It's a new Justice League game has been revealed. And it looks kind of adorable. It looks like little, like, figures like vinyl figures brought to life yeah i'll play it i'll give it a shot no nah, I'm, I'm gonna check it out for sure i mean i've got the i've got the dc like i've got like all the dc lego games yeah it's like we're, we're, people get <laughs> plugged in okay <clears throat> oh and by the way it was a 75 million dollar budget for the wonder twins movie and it was too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I I, I would have seen it. Um, it's oh, not yeah. like it's something that I'm gonna miss. Um, I hope they premiere in something else. I mean, we got that tease at the end of Crisis that you know could have brought them in, but Crisis was a tease. On there, James. Crisis was the tease. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you you should know this by now that. All of everything that was promised at the end of Crisis was nothing but empty promises. Yeah, okay. well, I mean, partly got screwed by a pandemic, but I'm I'm also curious to know if there was any plan after Crisis. I mean, there had to be something, something. But <laughs> yeah, their plan was like we've got them all on the same Earth. It should break wide open to be able to do all kinds of stories and easier crossovers and and then nothing. <laughs> and nothing. But yeah. All right, moving on here. We have more to talk about. So here's one that's weird. Okay, here's one that is weird. That the Christopher Reeve estate has signed. I'll read. I'll read the post it's from the Hollywood Reporter. Warner Brothers has also signed a deal with the Christopher Reeve estate to license his name and likeness for use in future films, TV, theme parks, and merchandising through digital technology, archive footage, and other forms. Now that's interesting. Okay. Um, it is cool for merchandising and stuff and likenesses that maybe you could do more with like the stories and do like a more continuation and actually make it look like him or. Well, I mean, if they were able to use his likeness in rides and stuff, you know what I mean? They would be able to. Right. Uh, recreate Reeve for rides and things as well. Um, you know, as movies progress, the more and more they keep doing that type of stuff, 
I fear as to what it means by uh, means for for these characters to never, never, nobody ever having an opportunity to play these characters again. And that brings um, up Star Wars, which, yeah, that's part of a thing there. Which I I really like, at least like the fact that Hamill's been involved with that. You know, so he gets to do a character performance until well, the last one, until the Book of Boba Fett. I, yeah, you guys have said that, and I haven't gotten a chance to watch that yet. So it's it's literally his. He even said he had no involvement. They had an actor. They digitally put Hamill's face as a young Luke. And uses- they used they used dialogue from the movies and other performances and books on tapes and things that he's recorded and created the lines of dialogue. Right. So, so Mark had no participation in the creation of the Luke Skywalker that appears in book of Boba Fett. Oh, wow. And, and that's, what's creepy. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like that now. Like there's a difference, I think, because that just happened with Stan Lee um, to be able to use his likeness. Um, I think, I think since his was a cameo purpose, just to show up as random cameos. I mean, I think that that use is is more in tribute, whereas the way these other companies are like pushing towards it almost seems as as though they they, they don't they'll just cut the actors out completely and and recreate people <laughs> out of computers. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, they don't need a live action performance, which is awful to think about. Well, Kathleen Kennedy, who's now become the joke of producers, and God, would someone overthrow her and get her away from Star Wars, stated that the problem with Solo was that you can't have young actors play the versions of these characters. No, that wasn't the problem with Solo. Which I the think problem, is untrue. Because I liked Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo. I liked... Um, Donald Glover as Lando. Yeah. I think they did an amazing job. I think that movie just had the production value. You mismarketed. You released it in May. You didn't keep the December pattern. You released it too soon after the the fallout from The Last Jedi. You didn't. You could have taken more production time and let, released it in December. You released it like a couple weeks before or after Endgame. So you're competing with yourself. You just you shot yourself in the foot with it. It had nothing to do with the actors and their performances because we liked the actors. So the fact that people, yeah, most people I know who has watched Solo, um, mostly likes it. So for her to say that you know we can't do that just shows you how that that'll be like. Oh, we'll just resurrect with digital technology, which. For a cameo appearance, like it was for Luke at the end of last year, or the the Mandalorian, it's one thing. They expand it in the Book of Boba Fett, and it just gets to the point where you're. It's just it's weird. It's, I mean, they shouldn't have done the Carrie Fisher thing they did in the end of, um, what do you call it, Rogue One? Shouldn't have done that. I didn't mind the Moff Tarkin thing. That was kind of neat um, because he is integral to the story, but they could have filmed it just a little bit different of him more in the shadow. Um, but yeah, so that that's just weird. But moving on to some happy news. Got the Bat Wheels premiering in the fall. Going to be rolling in on like the preschool show Bat Wheels, and you know that I'll be watching it with my kids. Yeah, I got a I got a new baby coming right up uh, in un, uh, in her alley. <laughs> She'll be a year old, roughly, give or take, uh, by the time it rolls out. So yep. you'll be like, you'll be like, watch this, watch this. Um, so that's all we know. We got a poster, no trailer, nothing. It'll be on Cartoon Network and HBO Max. So that'll be that'll be awesome. Speaking of kid stuff. We're finally starting to see some super pet toys. I sent you some photos. You did send me some photos. They're all they're all more like Fisher. So I don't know if they're going to do anything more. 
but it's Fisher Price did these little like crypto and Superman and crypto and uh, all the other pets. There's Ace and Batman. Then there was like a large plush of crypto and Superman. And you know what? I'm going to get me one of these because they're adorable and it's a Superman figure and I need a good crypto. So pretty right. Seen them on Amazon and I've seen some uh, advertisement for a plush crypto on at target, but I haven't seen them in the store yet, but I actually haven't really been to the store yet. So, So, no, yeah. I I haven't been to the store looking for looking for toys. It's it's not time for that. <laughs> like James, is like I'm I'm an old man, Tyler. I don't look for toys. Pfft. I just go on Amazon and buy toys like a normal person. <laughs> you... Right. So when they get so when they get delivered, I'm like, yeah, it's for my kid. <laughs> I don't go to the store. <laughs> But it's cool. I mean, I, I I hate that that movie got pushed back because it would be, it would have been out by now, wasn't it? Because it was supposed to be in May. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, we'd already been enjoying it and having a good time. But no, stupid people. Anyways, fall premieres. We found out that uh, Superman and Lois will not premiere until basically early next twenty twenty three. So probably like it did before, maybe like in February, January, 2023 was when season three of Superman and Lois will premiere kind of a bummer, but all right. And that star girl, which we thought was going to be premiering here soon and run through the summer is now premiering in the fall. So star girl will be in the fall for season three and Superman and Lois and the flash will both be in early 2023. Yep. So fall 2022, we'll get Stargirl season three. Oh, I think that'll be kind of cool, you know, just just having Stargirl on. Yeah, I mean, the shows are we're getting less and less of the superhero shows. A little easier I, to keep up I, with. I don't, yeah, it, it'll be easier to keep up with. And I don't think that it's that, you know, we, we've said for a very long time how they should just be shorter and kind of year round. And, um, that way people can pay attention to more of the, the series because there's not so much content everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you have, if you have a couple of shows on TV, you have a couple of shows uh, streaming, that's as much as people can keep up with. Like, but if you constantly have them rotating throughout the year, be much easier for people to keep up on them. Yeah. Than, than five with like 20 episodes, give or take. And speaking of, we have one more good thing and then we'll get on to the bad thing. I do not know this and I suggest Libra Mayho will be taking over the, oof, excuse me, will be taking over the covers, the variant covers for Action Comics. And holy crap, the first one that they released the image of. It's it's beautiful, James. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I friggin' love it. Um, I'm so happy that he's doing action comic variant covers now. Um, he's, been into, he's been doing Detective for quite a while. And, I mean, all of his covers are always great. And I and, always buy... If I'm buying a book and he does a variant cover, I buy... Yeah, and I I was at, at one point I was buying Detective, but I just had to you know whittle my numbers down, and so now that he's going to be buying a or he's going to be doing variants for a book that I buy every month. Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting those. The only one that he did a variant that I don't have the cover for that I want is I want the actual issue because I bought it in a collection of the Secret Origins New Fifty Two. That he did that's one that's probably my favorite superman drawing he's ever done and the uh action was it the action 1000 that had all the different covers why am i drawing a blank now he did one of the covers for no it was when they it was the it wasn't 1000 it was when 
dang it, Tyler. What's 1,000? When they did all like the different decades, like each cover was a different decade. Do you remember that? And his. We even looked at it together in the comic book store that one day. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh, well. People will find it. But all right. So now it's time for the sadness. Are you ready? Yes. So Gotham Knights was ordered to series. And for those who want to hear me really rant about it, go check out the episode before this because I was so frustrated I had to record something in my car and I put it up immediately. Um, you know, and I say this because we heard it was ordered to series and it seemed like Warner was cleaning house. They got, they were getting rid of their, you know, they canceled Batwoman. They canceled um, Legends, Naomi. They just canceled the Wonder Trends movie, like stuff they didn't think was good. They were getting rid of it. They were consolidating. And then I'm thinking in the back of my mind, like maybe they're going to like pump this show up and it's going to be kind of like Superman and Lois, but you know, with the Bat property. And then I thought maybe they would cancel Titans after season four because they're going to put all their money in building up this property, you know? Then they released the image, and I'm going to let you talk now. Ready, James, Um, (laughs) and go. Um, Yeah, the image just looks stupid. Um, (laughs) I mean, a dark, dingy alley with, uh, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't scream Gotham. The the characters are this this. There, there's no costumes to be seen. Um, not in the promotional image. I mean, I think I think most people, uh, who are looking to check this out or who would be would be looking to see these characters in costume. I feel um, like just using the term Gotham Knights is damaging the brand of the of the upcoming game. Right. Um. I mean, yes, four four of these characters are actually real characters, but the main character is a made up uh, character like Ryan Wilder. Like they yes. just want to, they just want a totally made up original character, so that way they can do whatever they want. And they're already doing whatever they want. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. They're they've done really well with costumes in the Arrowverse, like some great, some pretty good. Um, and just, I, I know this is beyond the Arrowverse now, but it's just, I don't know. I, I it's, it's horrible. And I it looks like crap. Um, this, it's, this first let's, image... it's, let's do a Batman show without Batman or any of his side characters and just follow around some edgy teens in Gotham. The, the characters that we like don't even recognize. Like, I mean, there's Carrie Kelly, Stephanie Brown, Harper Rowe and Colin Rowe. Those are all characters from the comics. But the main character is what is this even? What's his name? I can't remember. Bull crap and bull crap. Yeah, it Turner something or other, I think. Um, but I mean, the only thing that had Turner, me Turner Hayes. Yeah, the only thing that has me any kind of interested in is Misha Collins is playing Two Face. He's playing Dent. Um, what what kills me? Okay, I was talking with this with my friend. You want diversity in these shows. This is all, all CW is about representation. Okay. Why not make the character that's in the forefront, Duke Thomas? Because then you'd have, oh, he's actually in the comics, an actual in the comics character that's come up recently. And you'd have this new kind of group of characters that are all comics based, most created by Scott Snyder, um, that are leading this team. And we're not interrupting any Robins or anything like that. We're using these more obscure. You put Cassandra Cain in there also um, would be great because, and then look, 
the fact that they made Carrie Kelly, like they keep trying to force Carrie Kelly into main continuity when she's like an Elseworld character is crazy. And the fact that Carrie Kelly is now played by an African American when the character is usually a redhead is weird just because it seems like all these characters that were played by redheads have now become African American people. Not that I care about the, the race swapping. It's just weird that when it does happen, it's someone who is usually a redhead. That's just a weird. Yeah. Thing. Most of the, most of the redheads have been phased out of DC and other media, except for print. Right. It's just kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, it's a little pick, but it's still just a little weird. Cause it is across the board so far. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, it just, it looks horrible. Like I still stand by you here to put Duke Thomas in there and at least had another character from the comics and a character who's so, who's so new. He has no, um, no, uh, he has very little, little, uh, history in, um, in the comics that you could basically do mostly original stuff with him especially with the the angle that this this story is taking and then and then we just put an alfred in there you know but whatever i'm done talking about i'll watch the pilot just because i can and we'll do a whole episode maybe it'll be on patreon because i'll be using some flavorful colorful grown-up words yeah i was trying to you i was trying to keep that out of it because um I, when when this picture dropped, I sent some I sent some of those colorful words your your guys's way about my just, thoughts on it. I was just like, "What is this?" Like they're not. Uh, uh, I'm done talking about this. Okay, so let's talk about something good. Let's move on to our next segment. Young Justice has been doing really really well, and it's been two weeks since we talked Young Justice, so I'm going to try to our last week's episode not this current week but last week's episode was cool because i'm trying to remember all the details that got me excited but they try to pull zod out of the phantom zone superboy stopped zod from escaping not because he was trying to stop zod but because he thought he was saving zod and we learned that the zod's Learn that Superboy is an L of some to- sort, but they say, is he Zor-El's son? Like, no, he had a daughter. So that's the first mention of Zor-El and Supergirl. Supergirl still has not been brought into Young Justice. And I'm telling you, I would love Supergirl to come into Young Justice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely believe that. I, I think that if they continue forward, she will be here shortly. Because... I'm going to say this. I need something to watch with both my kids. <laughs> and I say that because there is no cartoon or anything that has both Superboy and Supergirl in it. We never got to Supergirl in the connective continuity of the DC animated films. And then we never got to Superboy in Superman the Animated Series or Justice League. There has not been, I want, in all reality, I would love to have a super show movie that's kind of based off that last arc in Superman comics that had Connor, um, John, Kara, and Superman all together. Yeah, I think that, I think that was in the action run. Yeah, it, I think, I think some of the story um, crossed over, but I think that was more, more in the action run. So, yes, I would love to have that. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I need Connor, Superboy, or John, and Supergirl all to be together in something. I need some more Superboy stuff to show my kids. Because Solomon, when I was watching um, some Superboy, I've been, I've been enjoying Superboy the or the adventures of Superboy, however you want to say it, the old TV series on Tubi. Thank mm-hmm. you, Tubi. Ooh, nice. I have Tubi. I'm going to have to go look that up. Dude, everything that was missing from DC Universe is on Tubi right now. Oh, that's so awesome. Superboy, the old Shazam, Batman 66. Um, 
it's all on Tubi. Even they had like the Legends of the Superheroes on there for a little while. But yeah, I've been enjoying watching Superboy over there. And I have to tell Solomon when I'm watching, I'm like, yeah, it's Superboy. He's like, but it looks like Superman. Yes, yes, Solomon. It's because technically it is Superman. Just, <laughs> it's Clark just as a boy. And ironically, Gerard Christopher was the oldest person to ever get the part of Superman. But yet he was playing Superboy <laughs> when he was cast. That has that's that's a that's a moniker to have. But anyways, back to Young Justice. So that was awesome. And it was something that I got excited about was just the promise of more Kryptonian action. And then in this past episode, spoilers, um, Con- Connor pledged himself to Zod. Yes. How are you feeling about that? He kneeled before Zod. Well, I think, you know, the the Phantom Zone sickness and then the warped worldview that Zod has of what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he's manipulated him into believing, especially after they found out he's an L. Now they seriously have ulterior motives uh, by having him around and using him. All very interesting. So yeah, I encourage everyone to check out this season of Young Justice. It is so much better than last season. Though this episode, most recently, did upset me just a little bit. Do you know why? Because Brion was in it. Oh, see? <laughs> yep, this is why James is my buddy. <laughs> Oh, uh, I as soon as I saw Brion show up, I was like, "Up, oh, Tyler's no longer liking this episode." He knows me so well, people. <laughs> he knows me terribly well. But yeah, I I do say that he is a little more interesting as he's being um manipulated. You know. Um, uh yes. And it and is- the 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 um I don't I don't, I don't know what the the word is the where, where they were <laughs> where the, well where they were threatening non-metas to to get out of um Markovia Yeah Yeah That was interesting where they where they're not allowing the metas to really work the way it's supposed to. Brion wants everyone to be in peace, but they don't want it. So it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's not um Yeah, it's it's not what he was trying to do because he's you know, because he's being manipulate uh manipulated by that uh psychic. That's why I said Jafar. Yeah. Jafar. Exactly, yeah. But all right, so I think it pretty much catches up with comics, Young Justice. Or it's time to get into comics. Which one do you want to do first? Superman Son of Kal El eleven or World's Finest number three? Oh man. I don't know. They were both really good. <laughs> Superman Son of Kal El it is. It's in my head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Super uh, Superman, Son of Kal El, number eleven. Um, last we left, John uh, was being told that he couldn't trust uh, Jay by Batman. Yep. Um, Can I just say real quick though, when I opened my my comic here, the fact that Naomi is on the back cover, and says, on the back new episodes cover. on Tuesday, new episodes Tuesday. I just I had to laugh, but <laughs> no, no longer. Continue. Um, Jay is leaving messages for Superboy. Um, Superboy, I like his inner monologue of being uh, scared 
being intimidated by by uh, Batman, um, but he definitely has to stand up to him. Uh, Batman says that Jay is part of the revolutionaries, uh, violent extremists, um, which later on we get to find out in here that uh, they are uh, the Suicide Squad from Tom Taylor's run on the Suicide Squad. Mm hmm. Um, which is, which is really cool. You know, that wasn't too long ago. Um, Batman being, being somewhat, I mean, he's being true, but he's also being, um, just as close as, as stubborn as he always is. Um, I love the conversation here between, um, between Bruce and Pa Kent. That is the best part. That is what made this book amazing for me was that because it talks, he brings up John as a child, but he also talks about how Pa Kent and Alfred were friends and would talk to each other. And that was just really cool to. Oh yeah. He talks about his questionable judgment. Um, he, he knows that he almost married Catwoman. Um, he, I love when he tells him, um, uh, out of the two of us, which one has raised a Superman or who has the most experience raising a Superman, (laughs) which you can't argue with Superman's dad. I mean, he's the reason he, he is the reason he, he's the way he is. Exactly. Um, this story about the cat is actually in. Um, the Rebirth comics Mm -hmm. uh, where John Kent um, tries to rescue the cat and fails. Um, It's very, it's actually very strong the way that it's written and the way he delivers it. Um, Superman calls uh, Nightwing. He wants to talk with him, uh, ask him his his opinion. Um, Says, uh, what's up? Been framed for another murder? He says, no, it's Batman. Oh, what's he done now? Um, <clears throat> I like the conversation they have because he basically that's he's a, he basically talks to him about investigating him, sneaking around. Um, he says, "I guess I could just try talking to him." He says, "It's more on brand. Uh, try that." Well, I mean, I like the first one. He calls him. He's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Just doing with arsonists." And then you see him like fly in, take out the fire and then wrap the arsonist up in a steel beam. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like Nightwing because he's not, he's not Batman. Like I had that under control, which we actually have a line just like that to Superman in world's finest when we get there. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but Nightwing says, John, I feel no personal ownership over these arsonists. My ego can handle an assist from Superman. Also, there's a small fire that, and he puts it out before he even gets, uh, before he even gets to finish the sentence. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's really awesome to get to see a lot of Tom Taylor's writing crossover. You get to see a lot of his Nightwing crossover with Superman. You even get to see his Suicide Squad run crossover here. And I have not got to read his newest issue of Nightwing yet. Oh, me neither. So then Superboy talks to Jay and basically flat out asks him about it. And then Jay tells a story about how they were experimented on and on a boat to be. He says, I escaped Gamora on a boat. (sighs) I wasn't the only one, but we didn't get far. Bendix, Bendis sent a gunboat to bring us down. And if it's not for them, the revolutionaries, they're not heroes like you, John. They don't hold back. But they saved me. They saved all of us. And then they learn about the... He talks about the things inside their head, and then John's like, the burning man? And then it says, later, at the Hall of Justice... Yeah, I li- I like the real the thing here. They talk about the 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 bombs in their heads and then they review data of the guy who didn't move and then the and then talking about the the bomb that blew up. 
um, that killed the guy. Uh, and John believes uh, a moment of recognition before the device blew. Mm-hmm. So this this gets John to believing that um, uh, somebody is controlling these people from a device inside their inside their heads. Yep, and he's there talking now with Wally, who's the Flash. I had to remind myself that. And they see it through John's X-ray, and they get the Burning yeah, Man is Lachlan Shrapnel. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Awesome name. <laughs> um, they get the Adam to run in, and he's messing with the bomb when Bendix tries to set the bomb off. And I wouldn't, he's talking through him, and you see him sit up, and John and Wally go shooting through. And then um, we see the Adam jump out and Superman catches him. And then while he takes him, Superman, I still wanted to call him Superboy, but John flies him out. Yeah, I love this here. He says, I'll take the Adam, get Lachlan out of here. Bendix could blow the bomb in his head the second we're clear. He says, John, you and I have more time when we need it. Just breathe, focus, let it all stop. Think your way out. And then I like how John's talking back to Bendix. He says, I can hear the device triggering. I know what comes next. I've been here before. Watched a man explode in my arms in slow motion. I was powerless then. I refuse to be now. Breathe, focus, let it all stop. Think your way out. I just had to quote what you just said because it's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Because um, it's true. What he's Because then he uses a super sped emergency microsurgery, a combination of x-ray vision and microscopic vision and heat vision. And then he says, I remember who I am. I remember who I was. Thank you. Welcome back, Lachlan. Yeah, and then the the last page here, we know that Luther's been working with Bendix. Uh, Luther, we're pushing the schedule forward. Why would we do that? The alien son, he knows too much. We have to act now. You're talking about a hostile takeover of global proportions, Bendix. Uh, Having had my own successes and failures in this area, I can tell you it's not the kind of thing you want to rush. Uh, this is an update, not a planning session. Do you uh, do what you said you'd do? Kill Superman. It's time for uh, for the heroes to fall. Don't, next, the return of Crypto. So that's cool. I figure they might try, like, in July to put out a comic with, like, Crypto in every book. <laughs> right. They're like, go see our movie. Yeah. We'll be talking more crypto in July anyways. So, all right, let's jump into World's Finest number three. Let me ask you a question. Are you liking World's Finest? Um, yeah. I'm liking it, but I'm not loving it like I wanted to when I found out Mark Wade was writing a Superman and Batman book. Yeah, the first two issues were, were a little bit more of a slog. It was very dense. Um... There's a lot of people involved, and there's a lot of story to tell. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm just like, man, like, you know, this is Mark Wade who wrote a Superman book that I loved, and he wrote it. Um, in like eight pages, you know, and uh, I don't know. It could just be me. Could be me. Well, I mean, if that was a focused story on Superman and Superman alone. This is this is quite a few people. Um, you know, they they've they had how many villains in the first issue? They had the Doom Patrol in the in the second issue with uh, adding Supergirl, uh, time travel. 
Um, they've gone back to ancient China. They've got the Flash and Mirror Master and Doctor Alchemy. Um, uh, they've got uh, we got Green Lantern showing up. Like there's it. it it's, it's a very it's a very busy story. Yeah. Um, the world building was the toughest thing to get through. I feel. Um, yeah which was the first couple of issues. Cause I like this one, but I like this issue better. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and take us there, James? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yep. It's a little late. <laughs> um, so we open up where Batman Shazam and Superman have been sent to hell. Um, creatures, uh, talking to them, trying to like kind of break their spirits a little bit. Uh, Superman's very um, steady, quiet, calm. Um, he listens for a fourth heartbeat. He listens for Faust's heartbeat, and he knows that it's an illusion. He throws a batarang and sticks Faust. Um, he tells him to fix Billy, um, which he did, but Billy's out. His mouth is back. And now we find out that the devil, Naza, is, is talking through him. Uh, the Doom Patrol is looking for Neza's tomb, um, Mont, Mont Blanc in Switzerland. Um, seems like uh, Robot Man and the Doom Patrol are playing F. Mary Kill uh, on their way up the side of the mountains. Uh, they show up in the tomb and they find a general who, which is interesting here. It kind of just runs along the lines of the doom patrol, um, an immortal man cursed with dementia. How horrible, um, negative man. My sympathy is mitigated by how many times he's tried to kill us, but yes. So... Uh, I mean that's just that's just very tragic to think about. Even though, even if he is a, a villain, um, they are searching for his. They're searching for Neza's uh, tomb, where where can where they can find him. And he has a little bit of information. He says there there is a concealed tomb. Uh, an island off Corto Maltese. Um, that's all they. Uh, that's all they could get for him. Then you go back to China, 1579 BC, uh, where Robin and Supergirl have traveled through time. Um, they are fighting all the warriors of Xi. Um, they tell them that they're legends where they come from, that they come from the future. Uh, they're not hiding. All they want to know is how to defeat Neza, how they defeated him. Um, they say laboring for months in a hidden area on a distant island, an entire village exhausted three generations worth of magic in order to construct a special tomb designed to hold him. Um, they they tell a story of they spent five days and five nights uh, and endured so much pain and blood spilled as they pushed him back into the into the tomb. Uh, eventually, with almost nothing left to give, we managed to herd him into his prison, but we're not done yet. Uh, there was a matter of sealing the door. Um, Robin says, tell me, and they... Uh, they cut back to Superman and Batman um, flying to Central City to rescue uh, rescue the Flash and Wonder Woman. They don't see her uh, as of yet. Um, the Flash is fighting Mirror Master. And the uh, Superman is too late to stop the Flash from running into a trap. Uh, through a mirror portal, and Mirror Master shatters it. 
nearby, Wonder Woman is Clay once again, uh, Dr. Alchemy from Clay the Amazon Rose, and to uh, Clay she has returned. Uh, you, on the other hand, can be easily reduced to carbon. Which is extremely deep. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting, just like you were saying, you know, about all the characters. Like, we have Supergirl, Robin, and then Flash, Wonder Woman. Very interesting. Like, this is a big story when you think about it. And I'm loving the art. Yeah, the art is great. Um, lots of, uh, yeah, great pencils, uh, great colors. It's just, yeah, it's very good. And we got uh, Dan Mora, artist and cover. Um, Tamara Bonavillain, uh, colors. Yeah, really, really great work. Yeah. Um, so they are Superman and Batman got to try and help each other out at this point. Um, Superman flies the, the mirror portal that is chasing him. Uh, he has to see where the flash is and um, he's taking the mirror portal and he flies it in front of Batman. So as it takes a blast from um, Dr. Alchemy stops the portal from chasing Superman and Superman takes down Dr. Alchemy. And then we have Green Lantern show up. Um, <clears throat> it's Green Lantern. Glad we're not alone in this fight. Wait, word from where? Um, says, uh, relax guys. I've just gotten word that Neza's no longer using villains as soldiers. Uh, Green Lantern, glad you're not alone. We're not alone in this fight. Wait, word from where? He says, where do you think? And Lantern traps them in a cage. Um, I don't understand. Nez has been imprisoned for millennia. How does he even know who all these heroes and villains are or who else uh, to conscript? Alfred, come in. Um, and as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh man, I can see where this is going. And it went right where it was. And I think that's kind of sweet. Um, I need you to check the back computer, see if anyone's accessed the Justice League servers. I'm looking now, Master Bruce, but I have to say, everything seems to be just as it should be. Um, as you've got the devil Neza with his hand on Alfred's shoulder. Can I say one? It's nice to see Alfred back in a comic, since this is not continuity. And that, that's what seems to be the thing with the current, with any of the Batman, Superman uh, together books as they're kind of out of continuity now to like their own thing. And that's, uh, it's just nice to see Alfred back. Yeah. That was intense. I'm going to lie. It was a good book. I, I liked it. Like I said, I liked it better this time around. And maybe when I sit down and read it like straight, cause it really did seem with that first book, like we were just getting dropped. Like, bloop, here you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you open it up, and it just starts off fighting um, uh, people going after Batman, people going after Superman, the uh, the the intensity, the freaking um, red kryptonite, like the Doom Patrol showing up. Yeah, it was, it was busy. But all right. That was a, it was a good run, good, good week. Good books, good times here at Krypton Report. We got more coming up for you later in the month. Keep checking out. Check out our dollar a month Patreon. It's $1. You get multiple episodes a month from patrons. We're glad to hear anyone can be on Patreon if they want to do and talk about anything. Just check it out. James, any final thoughts from you? Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the DC books I'm, I've been reading. Um, I said I haven't been able to get a whole lot in the last couple of weeks. So um, it was a nice day to read some good books. And now we'll check in with Ollie for weather. Ollie, it's going to rain. Thanks, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Ohio. <laughs> it, it was raining um, 
it rained twice and today and stopped and we had a horrible storm last night it's it's yeah just remember Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. Hey, we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us, and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to The Krypton Report.